Hello and welcome to Watch Me Write an SCP, number two, where I'm going to try and write an SCP that'll actually stay on the wiki this time. I have had an idea for a little while. I think I've actually talked about it on a couple of the podcasts that I do with the uh, Forlorn Foundry and the Vulgan about Edward James Almost, which is an idea that people believe that Edward James Almost will make a celebrity appearance at their location. And, uh, I actually have had a pretty complete idea of the way the story should go for quite some time, but I never got around to actually writing it. And yes, a lot of that is just based entirely upon the pun title. I think I read Edward James Almost and thought it said almost once, and from there I come up with the idea. The last idea I did, which I believe was the containment at large about the fat guy who couldn't fly, I'm probably not going to continue with that. I like the idea, but there's just no conclusion to it. It doesn't go anywhere. So I wanted something that had a little bit more of a complete arc to it, I guess. Even if it doesn't necessarily complete a story, it is one of those things that's just a weird incident or a weird event or a weird object. So with that said, let's go over here. Now, I recorded myself during the entire process of writing it. I've sped it up by about four times, and I'm going to watch it and give you some commentary as we go along about what I was thinking whilst I was writing. So, here we go. That's just... <laughs> that's just me. I was listening to Genghis Khan by Mike Snow, which is a nice, just a fast-paced, sort of uh, upbeat thing and right now I'm looking for yep I was going to type all the stuff out but then I thought you know what who cares about the object class this time around we're just going to take it out entirely I've been meaning to do that for a while and we're just going to do it today but yeah I uh, was looking for an article that I could uh, copy and paste the information from just the uh, formatting and everything so that it would be easier than typing it out I've done it before it's not that big of a deal you'll notice I actually accidentally cut out special containment procedures and it just says special containment uh, that actually needs to be fixed. Also, item number. Where did I grab that from? I need to fix that. Where that's from? Because <laughs> it should be item and the symbol for number, not item number the word. But here we go. Uh, it's a shared social delusion predicated on the belief that Edward James Olmos will arrive imminently at the location currently occupied by a sufferer. Yeah. And then we're just going to talk about how this delusion, ex how this delusion continues. Yeah. The shared delusion lasts for about three hours. Begins to con convince other, yeah, so they spread it through literally convincing other people that the, uh, that Edward James almost is going to show up. And it's also canceled after three hours by people just essentially believing it was a hoax and he was never going to actually be there. And the events originally, yep, yeah, here we go. And I'm <laughs> looking up Edward James almost. I'm writing down Edward James almost, uh, like, I'm trying to figure out is he a actor, director, and writer? And I look... Like, I do a... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> At least one fictional work that Edward James almost acted in or directed. I'm trying to get the phrasing right here. Uh, directed or appeared in as an actor is the best one. I was going to say directed, acted in, or wrote. But then I was like, I couldn't find any credits for him as a writer. So Because actors tend to have a basically those three things. He's also a producer as well, but I left that out. Yeah, and then original, yeah, the originator must be capable of vocal communication. That's the primary method. The SCP-XXX is spread. And here we go. Uh, I have an idea here that's not going to work out. <laughs> Standard scent foundation anti-mimetic inoculation is not currently capable of preventing the spread. The idea was that this happened at an SCP uh, site. I believe I, you, yeah, is evidenced by the, I bet I'm about to say something like outbreak at site 88. Yep, there we go. Yeah, and then I get rid of it because it just doesn't it doesn't work for it. One, this was important because it meant that uh, the the SCP could definite definitive. I was worried originally that the SCP was too like close to a non anomaly problem. Like people believe that so and so is going to show up at a s event and it doesn't happen. I'm sure that's not super anomalous, and I was worried about that. So I wanted to have it happen at an S SCP site, but then I felt that. A little bit later on, I decide, first of all, that having it happen at an SCP site is a little out there. It kind of spoils. It, it, it makes it about that event, and that event is not the focus of the article. So I took it out eventually.
Yeah. The fact that individuals can be made aware of the anomalous nature after the first three hours, even if it directly contradicts the belief that SCP-XXX was a complete hoax. That means basically just that they can be told that it was, you know, an anomaly and not a hoax. And they'll go, oh, I've been affected by an anomaly now. Yeah. They'll generally become excited at the prospect of meeting it. And at this point in the article, I am still writing Edward James Olmos uh, for everything. Uh, a little bit later, I'm going to change that to something else. While the originator will often attempt to inform others of works featuring Edward James Olmos. Yeah, here we go. We're starting to, yeah, realize that that doesn't really make much sense to sh follow the other thing. And it actually makes more sense to follow, yeah the second paragraph, because it's talking about the originator again. And finally, the originator must be capable of vocal communication. Is this the method by which it is spread? Then we continue to talk about the originator. This is another problem. Yeah, here we go. An actor famous for, say, yeah, an actor and director. Works better as an, a footnote, I think, there. It is no long, yeah, it, this is the point where, like, how did this get first uh, detected? And essentially what happens is that there's a social media scraping software that other projects who, you know, were following social media for one reason or another happen to detect that there's a lot more hoaxes involving <laughs> Edward James almost not, sh <laughs> almost, I said, I actually said it, Edward James almost not showing up at these events that were supposed, he was supposed to leave, you know, supposedly going to be at. And then I like the idea that, like, it doesn't stop people from leaving. People might get excited and be like, oh my god, Edward James almost is going to be here. But they don't, like, I'm going to leave my kids at home to starve, even though I only came here to the to this grocery store temporarily because someone just told me Edward James almost is going to be here. They just get excited and go, oh man, I can't believe I'm going to miss it. And they leave. <laughs> and when that happens, so how do they get, you know, how do they get non-affected by the... Anomaly, and I decided to make it so that they literally just start to forget that the whole thing happened, which can be detectable since they would probably post social on social media about it. Like, hey, I gotta leave, but come on over to the F Walmart on 67. There's Edward James almost is gonna be here any minute. <laughs> also, social media doesn't actually propagate the uh, effect. Like the anomalous effect, I'm sure people might who know who Edward James almost is and actually care might actually show up, but it doesn't like anomalously make them excited for Edward James almost outside of, you know, what other people might look and go, I mean, yeah, it's nice, I guess. Yeah, here I'm turning, I always forget when I'm writing uh, how the format for MTFs is like, <laughs> and yeah, I'm. Because Edward James almost was, I think, hit my favorite role of his is actually in uh, Blade Runner. So I went ahead and went with Tears and Rain as the Omega uh, 17 name. I mean, and also since they're essentially wiping out these events, it kind of makes some sense. And here we go. So now that we, like, I always wait sometimes for the special containment procedures to get a better idea of what exactly the anomaly is. Because even if I have an exact idea, it's best not to write, for me anyway, it's best not to write the special containment procedures first because they'll change so much depending on how the description evolves. So I tend to get some of the description. Bleh. So I tend to get some of the, I don't know why I said bleh. that's me like flubbing and then deciding I'm going to like edit it later, even though this is going to go out mostly unedited. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the the description can change so much. I'd like to wait until it gets somewhat solidified before I work on the containment procedures. Yeah, here is the what I hope to be a hook for the uh, reader, uh, because the idea is that you're reading this article at the exact time after some event has occurred that you're not aware of. And whatever that event is, it has essentially shut down all experimentation with this object. There will be no more experimentation with this object until we can get the containment procedures updated. All right. And here I'm about to do something. I need to copy and paste some cl the collapsible uh, code. And I went to SCP-2343 because I knew it had collapsible code in it. And, and what I ended up doing was accidentally... Uh, I had previously altered... SCP-2343 to be a list pages page, which meant that it's it's a multiple iteration SCP. So you click a thing and it changes, and I made it so that it all happens on one page, but that means that the code for it is not the normal page code. And here we go. Now I am doing, the th doing a thing that a lot of people don't like to do and don't believe it's necessary. 
I am, um, <laughs> I don't censor dates and names and stuff. So it helps to literally look up actual events that occur. Uh, and in this particular case, I need, yeah, I need to know where Edward James Olmos is going to be in a particular, on a particular date so that I can set the event up as happening on that date because the test that's about to happen is one of the events goes off. People believe Edward James Olmos is coming and he happens to be nearby. So the foundation's test is let's send him to the location and see what happens. In order to do that, I needed to know in the real world where he was at a particular time and the Philadelphia, <laughs> I'm just looking up Denny's. Uh, like where in uh, Pen where in Philadelphia are these Denny's? Because he was at Philadelphia Comic Con, I guess on April thirteenth through fifteenth, I think it was. I, I had to look it up twice, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's actually not the Philadelphia Comic Con; it's what's called the Great Philadelphia Comic Con. Either way, I don't eventually end up leaving that in there. But but the important point is is that I know that event occurred. So this is an actual. Uh, this this is consistent with actual real world events. Like if you look if you look it up on April thirteenth, Edward James Olmos was in Philadelphia, which to me feels I like internal consistency in my world. It's the reason why I don't censor out dates and names. I feel like it adds a deepness to it. Like ninety five, maybe even ninety nine percent of people are not going to look this up, but. Someone who happened to have been at that at that Comic Con will know that this is a real thing that could have happened. It just adds a little. I to me personally, I feel like it adds a little extra level of. Here we go. We're about to change Edward because I used the words Edward James almost so much it stopped. It like it didn't have meaning anymore. You know where you lose meaning when you say something often enough. So uh, yeah, I changed uh, <laughs> Edward James almost SCP XXXX one which makes it a little bit, and also fixes the tone a little bit. But yeah, we've got a, a consistency of event. Now, I started with, I wanted to have like a series of events where things start to go a little weirder and weirder. Uh, and I, I, I used my love of uh, Blade Runner to inform what the event would be, because in Blade Runner, Edward James Olmos' character, um, he folds up some cranes, uh, some uh, origami cranes. Yeah, here we go. Uh, we start with, uh, what are we doing here? We're doing a little bit of editing. Yeah, okay, we're doing a little bit of editing on the actual event. This is, some of this is going to change because the wording is a little awkward, but it's 23 kilometers, and I decided 23 kilometers was too far away. From the SCP XXX suffers, uh, the affected individuals begin to seek out and collect paper that is available, any paper that is available, and will uh, stop performing any tasks they were performing. Oh, that's kind of awkward. I may need to. I don't think I fixed that either. Work in the kitchen stops. Diners no longer. Yeah, here we go. I, I, I decided to list the number of people. Uh, give some details about it. Originally, it was like approximately 14 people, and I'm like, no, there's video surveillance. They know exactly how many people are in there. Stops and diners no longer eat. Foundation personnel. Huh. Yeah, here we go. We're shortening it down. And also, I don't know that the time period involved like it might not take him 10 minutes to go 11 kilometers but eh. it's in the middle of a city like this this denny's is located in the middle of uh, philadelphia so the idea that there might be traffic is reasonable and here we go and we're yeah especially during a comic-con this attempt was successful and a foundation driver began to travel to Began to transport. Yes, that's important. The foundation driver has to take someone somewhere for it to matter. And Clifton Heights, Pennsylvania, is just a, I guess, a sub, a part of Philadelphia. I don't remember exactly. It's like uh, different, different parts of a city, different names. Going standard protocol and it's very permitted. Yeah, there we go. That way, that it contains the event as much as possible. And then I was like, you know what? I didn't actually include that in the containment procedures. There's another thing I forgot to contain in the put in the containment procedures that'll end up being edited in after uh, I posted it because this ends up on the wiki right now. It's at plus seven last I looked. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the uh, yeah got to actually prevent people from going into the location. We don't want it to spread too much. Okay, so they've taken the paper and they have begun to craft origami cranes with it, which is straight out of. Uh, Straight out of Blade Runner. None of the individual present. I hope I change that to plural. 
None of the individual present had a history of train of or training in the creation of such works. It arrives at the SAP affected location. He's allowed entry by foundation personnel. Also, you'll notice uh, personnel is just a word I never spell correctly. I always, it's one of those things that's like, I, it, sometimes it'll hang me up too. Uh, yeah. Hold the crane. Yeah, I, I wanted to make him something slightly creepy here. They just hold the cranes and don't move. And then they look at they look at Edward James Olmos, place the cranes on the nearest available surface, and then experience a sudden and violent cranial inversion, which is their heads explode. All the pendul I like how I include I, I don't need to include all of in individuals immediately expire. That's not necessary, but I put it in anyway. And then I was I had an ending involved. Uh, like I had an ending for this conceived of, but I also didn't feel like putting it right here works. So instead, he speaks for approximately two seconds and leaves. There's no audio on this recording, so they don't know what he said. Yeah, should be noted that the that no audio recording was available during this event. Yeah. Yeah, and then they transport him away from the location. I originally had an idea that uh, the blood and gore from the exploded heads uh, covers everything inside except for Edward James Olmos, but then I decided that was a little off. Has shown no further discussion of the event with any individual, so he basically this happens and he doesn't even mention it to anyone. And that's me copy and pasting the collapsible code. Just because it's so easy to, you screw up one line and it's like messed up. And here we go. This is where we're going to put our button on. Like, this is the ending, right? This is the ending that I'm thinking of. Still attempting to understand the anomaly. Uh, it'll be updated. The containment procedures should be updated soon to reflect new knowledge gained during the test. It should be noted that lip reading experts have determined the SCP XXX 1 statement during the test was that wasn't funny the first time, which that was my button. That's supposed to be like you make you think, wait, this has happened more than once. So yeah, and now we're going to do start doing cleanup. That's the, uh, yeah, now we're starting to do cleanup on the, yeah, what are we doing here? We're fiddling a little bit with the special containment procedures. Yeah, making it so that entry must be directly approved instead of prevented, because I realized that allowing uh, Edward James almost himself into the event would have gone against this containment procedures. So I needed to include a caveat that allows the project head to allow people to go in. And then I changed the word experiments to tests. Excuse me, by the way. Taking a drink of water. Here's the important part that they remember that they lose memory of the event. That's very important because otherwise the foundation really wouldn't have a good reason to expect that this is actually an anomaly. Like them losing memory is what triggers them to investigate further. And uh, once you, you know, like once you see this in social media and you start investigating and investigating, investigating, you realize there's a pattern of behavior, especially when there's uh, surveillance footage available, which is quite often in public places. And then I'd got rid of the Comic Con stuff, so it doesn't also misspell restaurant quite often. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it doesn't show up as often as personnel in an SCP file, but it's another word I can't spell, apparently. Uh, but yeah, I took out the Comic-Con thing, and now I'm just looking at this and trying to get an idea of what needs to be changed. I took out Comic-Con, but the event still exists. The date is right. The place is right. Yeah, here's me trying to... Yeah. Uh, here's me trying to work in the blood covering everything but Edward James almost. It, it doesn't work. Except for the, yeah, just getting rid of it. I think I'm gonna, I might try once or more. Yeah, I'm gonna try down here. I'm like, well, maybe it could go here. Uh, no, yeah, here we go. Uh-uh, nope, didn't work it there either. Like, I'm thinking it through. I'm like, D can I put this in here? I don't know. All right, here we go. Now, we are about to post it onto the wiki. And I'm forgetting that this is a <laughs> private browsing session, which means I can't actually uh, do anything because I'm not logged in. <laughs> So I actually have to open up a brand new regular browsing session. And, little, and the wiki is super laggy today. Just click something at random, put SCP-4613 in there, copy paste, do all my spelling corrections, which you can see, uh, personnel, personnel, and also do a little bit of editing to make it flow, like the visual flow, I should say. You don't want to have too blocky of uh, paragraphs. And now I'm about to change the, yep, 
just do a straight up word replace. And then I look at it and I'm like, uh, it looks a little thin. And that's because the theme isn't applied properly and there's no rating module. There's stuff missing. And I'm just like, uh, doesn't look quite right to me. So I go over and I open up my sandbox. And I believe in my sandbox right now is the old... Yeah, there we go. I'm grabbing the code. Yeah, okay, yeah, I haven't even put that in yet. I'm about to. And then when I preview, it's not going to show up. And I'm going to freak out for a second. <laughs> like tears and rain. No, it's a shame they won't live. But then again, who does? That's another... Both of those are quotes from Blade Runner. <laughs> One of them, one of them is not a correct quote. It's a, it's a shame she won't live. But then again, who does? But I, I decided to put it differently. It's just a little fun note for me. And I'm like, okay, it's not showing up. So uh, let's try it in the sandbox. But then the sandbox has got its own theme that overrides. <laughs> so <laughs> that didn't work either. Now I'm looking up an image of Edward James Olmos. Because <laughs> I'm like, why not? I don't see a reason why. It's like, it's like the bare minimum of what you can do. So why not, right? Now I've got to go find an article that has an image. I've got to grab the page source component. Yep, edit all the editing, put it in the right place, change that. You, a lot of a lot of writing SCPs is actually just copy pasting code from other places. Like if you don't know how something works, just copy paste it. This is me renaming the file so that when I go to upload, it will be it will actually work properly. I don't have to rename anything or edit anything. SCP-4613 during an unrelated event. That's me grabbing the attribution. I'm gonna put that in the comments here, and then I'm gonna copy directly from, this is a, every page now has like, well not every page, but if you can include a module that will include like notes like this. So first thing we're gonna do, upload that. That's in. We're gonna do a hard refresh, the image works. We're gonna copy paste our, yep. Make sure they put quotes around it so people know it's a quote. Then I upvote my own article, because I always upvote my own article, and I give it a name, even though I have some difficulty getting it to work. Call it Edward James Almost, and save the page. This page always takes forever to save, even when the wiki isn't laggy. And that would be the end of it. If you like that article, go on over to SCP-4613. There'll be a link in the description, assuming that it's still up by the time this video goes out, which is going to be today. Uh, and give it a up for a down vote, depending on uh, what you think of it. And then, after you're done with that, or actually before you do that, scroll down and make sure you hit the subscribe button, and then the notification bell next to that. I may, if these videos start doing pretty well, write more SCPs on a recording, just so you get a better idea of my process and maybe you can adapt your process to work like mine. I don't know if that'll help you, if it won't help you, uh, but I think this is an interesting idea for a video and it may become a series, like I said, if people enjoy it. So let me know in the comments down below if you like this kind of video and I'll keep doing them. And if you really want to help support this kind of content and help make it so that I can continue to make this content for you, head on over to patreon.com forward slash Decimerian and pledge at any level. Uh, we have, actually, I wanted to make a note about this because I forgot to edit it properly for our last video, but Cassie Clark actually upped her pledge from $20 to $30, and I felt that was worth a mention. I forgot to edit the actual end card for my last video, and I wanted to make sure to make a special shout out for that. So thank you very much, Cassie. As for the rest of you, thank you for letting me know I'm not alone out here, and I will see you again on Tuesday.